It's the Waiting for Next Year dot com podcast. That's my fake happy voice because the Cleveland Browns went nearly Dwayne Rudd, thirty to twenty seven. This is one of the Dwayne Ruddiest since Dwayne Rudd. <laughs> it's not full Dwayne Rudd though, because no, the game wasn't in hand. There was still work to do. Yeah, yeah. Although, so just in case uh, you're wondering what we're talking about, depending on when you're listening to this or whatever, whatever, the Chargers. Hold on. Are, Let's just say this: if you haven't watched the Browns game, why are you listening to this? Well, it could. I mean, these things. Sometimes people listen to them three, four weeks later. No, I, I know that part. I'm saying you can say that part, but at this point, you're you're better off. Well, I'm just going to remind. I'm going to remind oh, you. Sorry, that, I'm not correcting you. I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean to interrupt. The Browns and Chargers were tied at 27. The Chargers drove all the way down with two seconds left. They kicked a field goal and missed. Tremont Williams was offside. So they re-kicked five yards closer with zero on the clock, hit it, and win the game thirty to twenty-seven. And I wasn't even like like I didn't I didn't kick my dog, I didn't yell. Um I just kept writing. Yeah, I didn't really uh Yeah. I was super excited when I saw the the ball go off wide right and then uh then the little flag thing. And it was confusing the whole game because of the San Diego gloves with the bright yellow on them. Yeah. I thought there was a flag on every play, but it was really just every other play that there was a flag on. Right. Well, and that's the thing. The Browns had 12 penalties, uh, and I counted. Five of them gave the Chargers first downs. Yeah. <laughs> if you need the Browns, five penalties gave the Chargers first downs. But let's be honest, in the scope of Cleveland Browns games, this one was kind of entertaining. The, the Browns had 432 yards of offense, including 100 yards of rushing. Duke Johnson looked like a man. Um, yeah. Gary Barnage looks like... Uh, uh, Gary see. Barnage? Well, no, I was going to say, uh, I couldn't remember Evan's last name. Evan something Moore? or other. Moore? Evan Moore? Evan Moore. Thank you. He really looks like Evan Moore to me. I expect him to like wear out very quickly. <laughs> um, no, so I, I don't know what everybody else's social media feeds are like, but I've got a lot of Facebook friends who are seriously actually saying, like, hey, look, I, I don't care that they lost, but I'm also starting to reevaluate the way I spend my Sundays. And it's like... I, I need to compare it to something because I have a personal experience because I used to be a smoker. Have you ever been a smoker? I never have really. Okay. Well, I used to be a smoker and it was like, I don't want to say it was peer pressure that got me to start, but I mean, definitely I had friends who started before me. And so I kind of followed them down the road and it was my own choice and I enjoyed it and I liked it. But you and said then, how cool it looked. Right. Exactly. So then at, at a certain point, the the one friend who was like, I think the first one to start smoking, he like quit. And I was like, well, you, it's like you left me in a dark alley that you already walked me into. It's, it's, it's garbage. Right. You're not allowed to leave me here. And that's the way I feel about these Browns fans who are attempting to <laughs> quit watching the Browns now. It's like, come on, this, this, I mean, you know, it's just, yeah, we're all coughing. Yeah, n none of us can run a mile anymore. So what? Let's do that together. Right. Don't leave. It's like yeah. you can't tell your friends to quit smoking, though, or not quit smoking. Right. Well, and that's – I've got a mixed reaction to um, – I'm in a, in a place where actually a uh, musician from, from the Akron area, uh, Patrick Sweeney, he uh, lives down in Nashville now. And uh, was posting earlier in the day that he was watching with uh, the Middle Tennessee Browns backers. But he sums it up uh, pretty well like this on uh, Facebook shortly after the game. He said, I've said it once, I'll say it again. Being a Browns fan is like being married to a beautiful woman who is your soulmate, whom you love more than anything. But she occasionally burns down your house with everything you own on a regular basis. Yeah. And it, that's the thing. I won't stop... It's not that I won't – I'm not going to stop watching. 
I can't. I'm not going to change teams. No. Um, the the reaction that elicited to me uh, from me today was, Cleveland, you suck, and that's not a non loving thing. No. S- still love the Browns, but to be honest, they suck, and this this stretch of four games was our stretch of four games to prove that we didn't completely suck because the next several games are going to be rough. But and let's, let's also say this. If they hadn't been so garbage in game one and game three, we might have taken this one because they actually looked good, and this was supposed to be the hardest of the first games. I mean, the Jets yes. are probably better than we think, but um, this was still supposed to be the hardest one. Well, the thing that also gets me is I don't mind if – much like San Diego, if we were plagued with injuries or we tried to line up with these guys and we were just outmatched, the penalties and the mistakes get frustrating because that's those are the things you can control and they're not. And that's that's one of the things that actually frustrates me about it is just if we just don't have the talent, we just don't have the talent. But when you mess up and the unforced errors and stuff like that. But aren't those that, errors part of not having talent? Jumping off sides to get this field goal isn't because of lack of talent. Uh, I, the, I might argue that it is, but I, I get your point, though. You know, if it's a well-disciplined team that just gets its butt kicked because they're not very good, I'll take that every week. But Well, this is the this is part of the problem with a team that – that changes personnel so much and everything else. I mean, the, the, the Browns are constantly chasing. And so the minute you think that they've got some continuity from year to year, they get a rash of injuries. And I mean, it's just, I don't know. I don't want to, I don't want to blame it on any one thing, but it just, all this comes back to the fact, and I wrote it in the recap, all this comes back to the fact that the Browns just aren't good enough yet. And yeah, we, we knew Kind of, I mean, I liked their off season to a point until I started seeing the way it came together in training camp in the preseason, and it occurred to me that this defense wasn't one of the top three defenses in the league, like it had the potential of being. That was right. their only shot. That was their only shot, and they're not that. So, right. after that, what do you do? You would you adjust your expectations? Yeah, and. I didn't have Super Bowl aspirations. I was prepared for a mediocre season, and I was prepared for things to show progress and growth. But again, like you said, since you're always chasing, it's like one of those cartoons where Porky Pig is working at a gas station, and he hits the dent in the car, and every time he hits the dent, it pops up somewhere else. Yeah, well, And, 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 and that's the problem in an ever-evolving game. And the other thing is I watched the game earlier because my wife is a Colts fan. So I watched the Colts and their kicker missed the first kick um, to win the game. And the Colts called timeout by, you know, before the kick. So he got a redo and he missed it and he missed it again. And the Colts go on to win in overtime. And so like, I know that if the Browns were just, X amount marginally better and maybe playing at home, maybe some of these bounces would go their way. But this was a day that an underwhelming Colts team so far this season was playing with Matt Hasselbeck at quarterback. I mean, like everything was working against this Colts team, but you know, they, they play in a garbage division. This was the Jaguars and that's just yeah. kind of how it goes. Yeah. You know, um, the, this point in history has been especially brutal for the Browns. And I'm not making excuses for them because they should still be better, but their division has always had at least one good team, usually two, sometimes three. Yeah, Uh, The Browns have never had enough continuity and quality in their front office. And so it's, it's, all combined for the disaster that we've seen. And, And that's not me making excuses again, not making excuses, but I see how it's worked out for the Colts. Even when the Colts are bringing Andrew Luck up to speed, they get to play against the garbage Jaguars and the garbage Titans and what has largely been the garbage uh, Texans. Yeah, it's it just it's a different it's a different it's a different game. 
Yeah, you have the luxury of trying some things. Whereas, uh, yeah, you don't have... You're not going to sneak away with anything in the AFC North. And even when we play the Steelers and Ravens, who haven't been that great, those are going to be really tough teams. Yeah, we didn't get That's, to see the Steelers without uh, Le'Veon Bell. Right. Yeah, it's... Uh, again, I'm not... I, I've, I'm past the point in my life where I get angry. I, I think it's super silly when, like, after last week, I'm not going to uh, name any names of who I heard on the radio, but they're saying, well, what? Maybe this is the time we cut a veteran to send a message, and this this losing is unacceptable, and we need to demand this and demand that. And, and I just want to say, you know, in this transaction – what you as a fan have your your transaction level is you can either participate or not participate but you don't get to make demands you can choose to watch it or choose not to watch it you can choose to buy a jersey choose not to buy a jersey but that's your only thing you don't get demands unfortunately no. as much as you want to pound your fists on the table do i want them to be better yes i do but y- you know you don't when fans start making demands, uh, if you look in the past, it, there was a thing uh, like a Kickstarter going around of, oh, oh yeah. if we put together a billion dollars, we'll buy the Browns. That would be the the worst run organization in the history of we'd have a backup quarterback starting every week. Yeah. That, We're not great at that. <laughs> no, no, no. We can, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I... Yeah, I can only imagine what kind of syntax we would enact if we were owning the Browns as well. <laughs> um, we'd have we'd have a dome and the outdoor stadium so that we could have the best of both worlds. Yes, and we'd always use it on the wrong. You know day. what? Come to think of it, I would like go. the dome and the stadium. Could we have both? I want both. Yeah, Retractable roof awesome. is not enough for me. No, no. Although that's that's a funny thing too. So that like the. I always expect the Colts to lose on days where they leave the roof open like today because I always just assume that they're they're taking their home field advantage and they're kind of giving it away, at least compared to what it would normally be. Because yeah. it would be loud. and Well, it's like if you play, if you play in a dome 90% of the time or 95% of the time, whatever it turns out to be, you should never open the, open the, the roof because when you open the roof, all of a sudden you don't have – that experience over the opponent you're it kind of evens the playing field i think yeah you yeah know, the fans in the stands are still yours but um from a like the elements perspective uh anyway that we don't have that problem in cleveland <laughs> <laughs> nor do we play meaningful games in cleveland um when the but, snow flies yeah when the snow flies I, i'm trying to remember the last time the browns had a home playoff game must have been ninety two. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. Um, I don't. So, how was the rest of your weekend, man? Did you enjoy it up until uh, <laughs> up until the? Uh... I I even enjoyed it during. Now, if this is a bit of an ordeal, that I I think I'm just going to tell the story here because. Hang on a second. The last home playoff game was 19, <laughs> 1994, The wild card round. The Browns beat the Patriots. 20 to 13. I remember watching that game. 1994. And then they lost to the Steelers on January 7th. Brutal. Yeah. The last two playoff losses for the Cleveland Browns have been the Pittsburgh Steelers on the road. <clears throat> if you need them. <laughs> my, my Twitter is still blowing up, by the way. Cause the, what did you say? All the I I, po- I reposted the the last second losses in Browns history. Oh, um, it's the forty first last second loss. It's the twenty fourth time that an opponent has beat the Browns with a score in the last minute. So, <laughs> I mean, it, it's and I don't I don't post these things anymore. Like, oh, I can't believe my life. It's more like, wow. It, yeah, it's mostly it's the statistical anomaly that's so fascinating. Huh. The, ben Cox um, 
you know, quoted or, you know, coined the phrase season of huh for the Cavaliers. Yeah. Um, but I, I think I need to treat the Browns a little bit more like the Cavaliers, except they're my primary responsibility at waiting for next year. Like I, I, st- I stopped watching the majority of Cavaliers games um, by the second year post when LeBron left. Cause yeah. that, I mean, we're talking Samardo Samuels and, and tall white guys that I can't remember their names from yeah. like Notre Dame and stuff. I mean, it's just awful. And so yeah, I just tuned it out. I just tuned it out. Um, I can't really do that with the Browns cause I have to write about them and stuff. Well, and I don't want to, I still enjoy like watching and everything. Mm-hmm. And, and, and it's not as gut wrenching to me as it used to be. But no. as I was saying, if I were to have written and told this story on the Friday Pumble, people would have thought that I was getting too ridiculous. So I'm just going to tell the story here. Um, my brother has an annoying habit of uh, recording the game and then starting late because he doesn't like to watch commercials. So. I, uh, some friends I was going to watch it with, they had an outdoor soccer game that they needed to go to. And so I was, all right, I'll go watch with him. And he's like, well, I'm going to start it at five or five 30. So I say, okay, I sequester myself. I go and I pick up some pizza and I take it to his house. What kind of pizza? It was Papa John's. Oh my gosh. It was last. What is se- wrong with you? I'm more upset about that than I am the Browns game. Well, we'll diarrhea soon, but not oh. yet. That's huh? what's wrong with me. Do you not have pizza places in Akron? We do. We have some excellent ones that I didn't have time to get to. I'm going to report you to somebody in the Akron area for, for doing that. Listen, tell Jacob that I could have gone over to Luigi's if I wanted or Gioninos if I wanted. I just I wanted to grab something quick. It's five seconds from my house and then took it over. Dave chooses Papa John's and will be mocked for it. Okay. Next bullet Fine. point. Go ahead. Okay. With the story. Are you done? For now. Did you get a dipping sauce, you douche? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm done now. Um, <laughs> anyway, so I get to his house. We go to turn on the game. He hits the DVR like recordings list. And what's not in the list? And that's the Browns game. So he says, I swear I set it up to record. So we, instead of catching up on the first half, we start with four minutes to go in the first half, 10 to 10. So, okay, that plan has been ruined. Don't watch the first. Don't really get to watch any of the first half. Don't get to skip the halftime report or anything like that. So, okay, fine. Then go through the rest of the game, watching commercials, mind you. Get to the end, and he a couple of times has rewound so we could see a couple of things again. And we get to the very end of the game. Two minutes to go. Browns drive down. Barnage makes an amazing catch to get it uh, first and goal on the, the Chargers one. The Browns are ready to go. And the DVR says, oh, I'm at the end of the DVR recording. And then so he goes to change it to CBS live and it gets the 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 uh, AT&T U-verse box gets very, very confused, decides it needs to reboot itself. And so for about five minutes, we sit there while the thing reboots and we miss the touchdown to Barnage and we miss the two point conversion and we come back just in time to see the Chargers get the ball back, march down the field, and then the ending happens. So not a great multimedia experience for me today. And again, if I would have said this story on the Friday Fumble, people would have thought I was going a bit too far with the tragic viewing this week. But Yeah, but did you see Duke Johnson's first career touchdown? That's pretty sweet, right? Saw the replay of it. On Waiting for Next Year? Uh, not yet. I haven't logged on yet, <laughs> but I most certainly will. It was really for, awesome. He outran all... he outran the defense. Perfect thirty four yard teardrop from uh, from Josh McCown. Josh McCown played a good game today. Yep, he missed a couple of throws, but he really did have a good game. 
I'll give him that. He seemed he seemed okay. He held on to the ball too much too early, and I don't yeah. say that just to like rub it in your face that you missed a lot of the first half. He really <laughs> did. You could tell me that anything happened in the first half, and I wouldn't be able to dispute it at this point. And then after a crater opened up at midfield, they got that fixed <laughs> shortly thereafter. But after it opened up, man, Brian Hartline got hurt. That's how he got hurt. Did Brian Hartline get hurt? I didn't see him. The rest he did of the game. get hurt. He missed the rest of the game. And Dwayne then Bowe, Dwayne Bowe was in for one play, and then they took him out. I believe he got one snap um, where he lollygagged <laughs> on a route, and uh, that was it. That was all she wrote. Um, I was really impressed with how the Browns' little guys played underneath for once and, and yeah. got open and then were dangerous in space. Because that's something that if you're going to have five, ten receivers and and players like that, they've got to be able to, to do that kind of thing. Yeah, that has to be the way it works, or else you just won't have receivers that work. Right. Well, and that's what works for the Patriots with you know with Edelman and a lot of like atypical receiver type guys. Um, you know, Tom Brady only had Randy Moss for a little bit. You know, the rest right. of the time it's been you know, Gronk patchwork. and little guys. Oh yeah, Gronk. Gronk is just not fair. No. Gronk is like Jeremy Roenick in NHL 94. You shouldn't be allowed <laughs> to use him. He's he's Bo Jackson. Yeah, he's Tech unfair. Humble. Just unfair. Um, so anyway, I guess that's about it. Where do, where do the Browns go from here? Does anybody care? Well, that's the problem. Again, the schedule gets really tough. I mean, Baltimore isn't – I mean, the people we thought were going to be as good as they were, you know – they weren't. The Jets are better than we thought. The Raiders are a little better than we thought. Yeah, is Baltimore any worse than San Diego, though? I mean, they're kind of comparable. Well, no, we got a chance against Baltimore. But but again, at this point, I don't know. It's it's tough to say because no, I don't know many people had much expectations for this year. That, and And I guess lucky for everybody, the NBA season is super long. Yeah, because I don't really, I'm not really prepared to really engage with the Cavs until Christmas anyway. All right, so the Browns have a chance at Baltimore. They'll be probably three and somewhere between three and seven point underdogs there. Yeah. They'll be at least seven point underdogs at home against Denver. Yeah, assuming nothing changes, they'll be at least three between three and seven point underdogs at St. Louis, there'll be more, I at least seven points, maybe more underdogs against Arizona. There'll be more than three point underdogs at Baltimore or sorry, Cincinnati. Are so they going to be favored the rest of the year at Pittsburgh? They won't be favored Baltimore at home. Maybe by that point, by November 30th, maybe they'll yeah, be favored. We'll see. Yeah. Um, Cincinnati at home, they could be favored. I don't think they'll be. They won't be favored. Cincinnati at home, they could be favored. San Francisco at home, just depending because San Francisco's had a really tough time of it. At Seattle, they won't be favored. <laughs> at Kansas City, they won't be favored. And Pittsburgh at home, they on January third, they could be favored, but only if you know, like Ben Roethlisberger and Le'Veon Bell and. Uh, Antonio Brown are all hurt. Like if if the Steelers end up signing and starting Thad Lewis, <laughs> um, he's out there. But if if uh, I mean even if the Steelers came in healthy, starting Mike Vick, they would be favored. I think in that game at least at this point. But you know who knows? Maybe the Browns get way better. Make maybe Duke Johnson turns out to be a rookie of the year candidate. That's you know what, too. And, and that's why I'm going to keep watching. That's why I'm not like depressed about it or anything like that. I, I'm interested to see how it unfolds. And again, I hate to use the term, but I love the Browns. I'm not going to stop loving the Browns, regardless of what's going on with the organization. That it, it's more the concept of the Browns is way beyond the organization in my head. Oh yeah, those guys don't mean anything to me anymore. It's it's the people that I hang out with, it's the food that I eat, it's um, it's it's just, the laundry more than anything. It's still the best way <laughs> to hang out on a Sunday, you know. Yeah, as as hack 
and and cliche as it is, you know, the crock pot full of chili was happening in my house today. On the way home to watch the one o'clock games, we stopped and picked out some nice soft bread and a bag of cheese. Mm-hmm. I mean, this is this is what this is what Browns football is. I'm going to go to a couple more games this year, and I'm just not going to be precious about it. If they if they really suck, I will leave early. Um, right. And don't give me this. Diehards don't leave. Uh, okay, I'm not a diehard for this team. If they're down three touchdowns in the third quarter, I might I might just go home. But I'm going to be down there pregame. I'm going to be down there for the national anthem and the announcement of the rosters and I mean, that's really where the fans get together. That's, that's what it, it's about. You know, it's a, it'll no, be about sharing, the people I'm with. I know this is a sports podcast, so I won't get too crazy with this, but just sharing emotions with other people, like mutually shared emotions with other people in close proximity, whether those are highs or lows, it's always a cool thing to do. Yeah. When everybody's feeling the same thing, and that's, and that's why what's happening at Progressive Field. Well, no, and even then, even then, um, home opener, uh, any playoff games, they, yeah. Anytime there's an occurrence, July Fourth, anytime there's anything, you know, like an event. Yeah, yeah. I've, hell, most Sundays, most Sundays, people go nuts. So that's baseball's real problem. They've got so many games, they can't create a sense of urgency or scarcity. Oh, yeah. Until you get to the playoffs when it's too tense. Right. Yeah, when baseball playoffs pitch, are so brutal. Oh, my God. Every pitch is scrutinized. Thank yeah. God we don't have to deal with that. Yeah, no kidding. It was funny because they sent, uh, they sent the, um, the invoice for the playoff tickets, and we opened the mail the day after they were eliminated and we called and we're like, Hey, do we have to send this check? I mean, <laughs> I, you know, they're going to credit you for it anyway, but, but still they're like, no, we got eliminated last night. I'm like, yeah, we know. That's why we call. Uh, we're aware we're season ticket holders. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of, what kind of dummy do you think I am? That's why we called stupid. <laughs> no, that's uh, yeah. So anyway, my experience with the Indians. <laughs> I am really looking forward to Cavs season. I, I have half a season of tickets. Excellent. Yes, yes. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to suck up to you for a while. <laughs> There's nothing you can do. No. <laughs> we'd have to. We'd have what to. What if do I the, promise to start writing little blurbs to go with the Friday fumble? The Cavaliers podcast. The Cavaliers game. WFNY podcast selfie game would be on point if you and I went to a game together. <laughs> <laughs> you and your backward Mozgov jersey. Oh, yes. Did you see, and I don't know if Waiting for Next Year put it up yet, I suggested that they do it. The the interview that they sent Joe Harris around. Oh, yeah. I, I We have not put it up yet. I saw that uh, video, though. But he, yeah, when he went up to Mozgov and Mozgov was wearing the Verzhao wig. And Mozgov's Russian accent, like he's like an 80s villain. <laughs> His accent is so perfect. And he just goes, I am Andy Verzhao. I am from Brazil. And then Harris asked him if he liked Donald Trump uh, uh, more than Putin. And then he thought that it might not be a good idea if he answered that one. <laughs> I don't think it's a good. <laughs> I don't think it's a good idea to answer that one either. Yeah. Smart move by everybody by shutting that one down. I'm trying to find it because we could we could actually play it on here. Let's see if I can find it. Can you stall for a I, second? It, yeah, it's in the it's in the Slack. I know that's where I'm looking. Oh, I'm looking for Joe Harris, and it wants me to look for Joe Gilbert. No, I don't want to look for Joe Gilbert. But I don't know why uh, why Joe Harris never got to LeBron. I mean, he got to Kyrie. Kyrie said like two words to him. He got to Kevin Love. He got to Verzhao. Let's see if this works. Copy. Paste. Let's see. Oh, yeah. 
Hey, this is Joe Harris with Fox Sports Ohio. Uh, this is Cavs Media Day 2015. You know, it's pretty chaotic in here, but, uh, you know, excited about interviewing some guys and talking with, uh, you know, some of the big names and uh, big personalities that we have on the team. Should be a lot of fun. We'll go find out what we can see. All right, so we got Kyrie here. Um, you know, just kind of take me through uh, what you did this summer. You know, what are some of the highlights? I lived. All right. Uh, this is a... Uh, that's like half my podcast guest right there, Kyrie Irving. <laughs> like thinking he, he's he thinking he's wittier than he is. All right, here's yeah. uh, Joe Harris with Bergeau. The best teammate that we have on the team uh, is Andy Bergeau, the love of Cleveland, the wild thing. Um, yeah, we just you know just a couple quick questions. Ask you about your summer. You know, just keep it light. This isn't you know I don't want you tense enough. This isn't too serious an interview anything like that. So just answer honestly. For how long are you going to talk? Jesus. I'm Andy. I'm from Brazil. All right. <laughs> All right. So that was, uh, <laughs> that was Mozgov in an Anderson Vergeau wig. All right. Here's some more. Andy, uh, you, you watch the, what do you think of Donald Trump? Uh, I think he's going to run for president, right? <laughs> yeah. What do you, what do you think about him running for president? I don't think about him, you know. You think you'd be a better leader than uh, uh, Putin? I, I probably shouldn't know. answer that. I don't think so. <laughs> uh, one of the questions we've been asking a lot of people, we just want. All right, so this is Delhi. Now, you know what your thoughts are with uh, you know the American politics, with the campaigns really roaring up. You know the Republican debate being in Cleveland, and then that obviously them host or Cleveland hosting the Republican National Convention. We just want to know, you know, how you're feeling about it in general and what your stance is like. <laughs> uh, well, as an Australian, uh, from the outside looking in, uh, it's it's very interesting because it's a bit different to politics in Australia. It's a lot more high profile and uh, a bit more of a circus, I would say. What's your favorite Joe Harris James moment Jones. of last year? Oh, Joe Harris? Joe Harris, the first time he stepped out of bounds on the sideline, and Coach Blatt just went into a temper tantrum. If you could, you know, use one word. More Kyrie. Just describe me as your friend, teammate, whatever it might be, what would it be? Solid. Solid. I'll take that. I'll take that. <laughs> Caleb. Up. What's good with you? What's good with your boy? What's good with you? Boy? What's good with your boy? Hey man, we uh, you know we didn't want to. We'll take. We're gonna take two. By the way, if you say what's good with your boy, that's never that's never cool. I don't believe I will ever say that. So that's good. What's good with your boy? Yeah, no. All right, here's uh, more Kevin Love. Seconds, guys. We take two seconds. I got. We got one question. We got. We got one question for you, Caleb. What's up with you? What's up with you? This is with Fox Sports Ohio. Okay. Uh, Caleb, we just were coming around. Uh, we want to know what your favorite Joe Harris memory is. Of- and probably he hates being called Caleb. Hey, Caleb. Yeah, probably. Last year. Uh, favorite Joe Harris memory. Well, there's too many to count. Um, Keep it PG. I'm, keep it PG. Okay. Okay. PG. I would say, uh, uh, what was what was the name of our little clique we had? What was the name of our clique? What? Which one? The injections. So, Lethal injections. Yeah. The injections were Kyrie. So he was part of the injections. Is that part of when K Love was fitting out? <laughs> That's very possible. So I, if I start calling you like D Star. D star, and you'd be like, nobody calls me that. <laughs> <laughs> What's good with you, Craig? What's good with you, D star? <laughs> All right, here we go. Me, myself, Mike Miller, Killer, and Champ, aka, I mean, I should say James Jones, aka Champ. And this is early on in the season. The rookie tried to, well, former rookie tried to sit at our table. And we weren't having any part of that. We had to kick him out for quite a long time, but then he started getting us coffee the whole season long, so we weren't too mad at that. So a lot of Joe Harris memories. That one sticks out in my mind. Do you think I can get a ride with James you, Jones. like, home after after we finish up? Uh, it depends which direction you live. Do you live west? The champ knows where I live. He just, he just <laughs> messed with me. He's been over my house many times. So 
If you live west, yes. If you live any other direction, no way. And to be honest with you, I think, I mean, people out here should be kind of worried kind of about yeah, their, that their was, jobs. That you know, was the I'm, most hard-hitting question of the day, right? Yeah, there. like, you know, and, and I feel like you kind of, you know, yeah. you're going to tell me things that you won't tell anybody else, well, you know? That's, I, I just gave them inside scoop to, to last year. We got to cut it. We got to cut this now. We got to get out of here. We're out. We're out. We, we're out of here. I swear to you, man, the this is like the reverse racism, but black guys must never stop laughing at white guys in the NBA. They, they are the most, like Joe Harris, K-Love, K-Love, what's good with you, boy? <laughs> I mean, like, if I know it's a it's a hack cliche thing that, and I've, I've said that twice now too, but like, like African Americans just kind of exude cool, you know, whether it's yeah. jazz or, or anything else. Um, Joe Harris shows us just how much um, awkward – how awkward white people could be in the NBA. And you just wonder if they're like, hey, shouldn't you just go and work on your outside shot? Like, this is the sequel to Adam Sandler having the old white lady rap Rapper's Delight in movies. Right. <laughs> oh, man. I, that that was some gold, though. But I don't think we were laughing with Joe Harris as much as we were laughing at him. Yeah, especially with with Kevin Love pretty much saying... Yeah, you kept bothering us, and then you started getting us things. <laughs> it's it's almost kind of like we got just an insight into some abuse that was going on, and we just all have to kind of go, oh, I see. Well, I mean, it, it spawned part of the Cleveland t-shirt industry with Delante West. You better have my donuts, right? That's true. So, oh, man. Now I, I'm, I'm digging the audio. I wish I could find Mike Pettin's comments of the game. I'm sure they were special. I'm sure. Um, did you happen to see? Uh, was it Bill O'Brien, the coach of the Texans? Yeah. Who basically, is it just, Bill? I th- I thought it was Bill. Yeah, it probably is. He is a red ass. Yeah, like I had watched a little bit of Hard Knocks, so I thought he was somewhat interesting. And then they just show him, and basically, he says, "I need to coach better." And they're asking him specific questions, and he just will stare down the media person. He goes, I have to coach better. <laughs> and then someone else asks, well, what about in this situation when you did this, this? I have to coach better. Are we done? It's like, geez, man. It was really funny um, and kind of embarrassing. I was, I was looking for that, too. I can't find any more audio, man. I'm trying right. really hard. I see you've already called me out on Twitter. <laughs> yeah well you know when 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 you know a guy and he orders papa john's and he admits it it's just kind of the way it goes i don't know i think that's a good place to stop what do you think i think it is too All right is that because you're not talking to me now exactly that's exactly what this is <laughs> All right, everybody. Thanks for tuning in, and uh, I hope I hope this made you feel a little bit better about uh, the Brownsish Browns loss to the uh, San Diego Superchargers, thirty to twenty-seven, on a Dwayne Rudd light play by Tremont Williams. Um, any any final words, or is this part of the silent treatment? No, I'm over the silent treatment now. Uh, We'll just get ready for uh, for Friday morning. We'll be back at you with the Friday fumble that is gonna get you all prepped for the Ravens. So, yeah, I hope you guys are digging it. I've really enjoyed listening to it. I love, I love that it's a uh, written produced podcast. I I love all the bits. It's uh, it's been a lot of work, but it's been very satisfying. Um, we've gotten good just, feedback on it. Oh, good. I haven't. Like I haven't gotten bad. I just haven't gotten just but from people I know already. <laughs> yeah. And I've been, and I've been kind of. I went on a, a long drive last weekend with uh, my brother and a, and a friend, and I forced them to listen to it and did some kind of field research as to what's funny and what's not. So, so we're you, learning. You actually listen to yourself too. Yes. Oh, I can't handle that. I can't actually. You know what? I can handle that, but not with other people. It was tense, but I needed to see what stuff I was losing them on and what stuff I wasn't. So it was worth doing. You kind of grit your teeth. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. 
All right. Well, thanks so much for listening, everybody. Uh, enjoy your Mondays. It's not it's not all a loss. Duke Johnson's pretty cool. Okay. Um, and his name is Duke. And if he was at home, Duke. We, get, we get to do that. Yeah. So let's be thankful of that. All right. Until next time, everybody, it's the Waiting for Next Year dot com podcast. Waiting for next year.